All right, so now let's create our beach ball. I'm going to switch to my oval tool right here and make sure my stroke color is set to four. And then I'm going to click right here on my fill color and change it to this button right here, which is going to change it so that I don't have any fill at all. So there'll be no color inside the circle. And then I'm just going to click and drag. So I'll hold down shift, click and drag, and set up my beach ball. Just take my selection tool. I'm going to select this and just move it over a little bit here. All right, I'm going to hit Command Plus and zoom in. Hold down the space bar and click and drag to move my canvas over. I'm going to take the oval tool again. This time, I'm going to draw another smaller circle. I'm going to draw it kind of to the side of the, uh, the shape here. I don't want it to be in the center. Then I'm going to take my line tool and click on this. I'm going to click and drag and establish some detail work on my beach ball here. Okay, so I want to make an edit to some of these lines. So I'll go to my selection tool right here. And you can see as you move over the lines, your cursor changes. If I'm in the center of a line, I have this curved line underneath my cursor, cursor and I can adjust that line. I'll hit Command-Z to undo that. If I go to the end of the line, my cursor changes. I have now an angled line below my cursor, and I can click and drag and change that line. I want to change this line right here. So I'll go to the end, I'll click and drag, and just kind of move this over. I think this line I'll change. Bring this one in a little bit. All right, let's extend this line out a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to fill this in with some color. So before I do that, I'll click on the flood fill, and I want to go over here and click on this button, which is gap size. Now, if you have it set to don't close gaps, and you fill this in, sometimes the paint leaks out. And even though it looks like your lines are closed, the vector that connects these lines is actually not connected. You can't see it. So to fix that, you just click on here and go to close medium gaps. And that way, when you fill this in, you won't have any problems. So I'm going to change my color here to red. Fill in this section here. I'll choose a blue color. Fill in a section. And then last, I'll take yellow, fill that in. And I'll fill in the rest of these sections of the beach ball with white. One, two, three, four. There we go. All right, I'm going to hit Command minus to zoom out here. And now I'm going to just um, establish a second keyframe for the uh, beach ball here. So I'm going to go to 5, 6, 7. I'll click on frame 7 right here, right click, and go to insert keyframe. So I can see that right now the beach ball and the bowling ball are not connecting. And what we need to do is we need to get the ball, the bowling ball and beach ball to connect so that the bowling ball can push the beach ball up into the air. So. I'll probably just cheat this. And so what I'll do is I'll go to frame 7 right here, switch the bowling ball layer, I'll unlock this layer, and I'll switch to my selection tool here, and I'll push this down. And then I'll go to frame 6, and I'll move this a little bit down. And now we have a, a contact point where the bowling ball can smash into that beach ball. All right, so now I'll lock the bowling ball layer right here. I'll switch back to the beach ball layer. I'm going to go to frame 8, and I'm going to right click and go to insert keyframe. All right, so here I'm going to move the beach ball up into the air. So now I'll hit return, and you can see We've got the beginnings of our beach ball flying into the air. 
So I'm going to establish some other keyframes for the beach ball as it goes through our animation. So I'm going to go to frame 13. Right click, go to insert keyframe. I'm going to move the beach ball up here to the top of this arc. And then I'm going to go to frame 19 on the animation here. I'll click on this blank frame. Right click, go to insert keyframe. And I'm going to move this down. And we'll just see our bowling ball is going to stop right there. So let's move this. I'll cheat this a little bit. I'll push this over. All right. And then what we'll have to do is we'll have to go to frame 13 and push this over a little bit. Just change our arc slightly. Yeah, that'll that'll be okay. All right. So now I'm going to go to frame 24. Right click, insert a keyframe. We'll go to the apex of this arc right here. And then lastly, I'm going to go to frame 32. Click on that blank space. Right click, go to insert keyframe, and I'll move this down a little bit lower here. So we want it off of the screen here. All right. So I'm going to start on frame one up here, and I'll press return. So as I watch the animation, there's quite a bit of time. It looks like the ball's moving rather slow. But you have to think about the object. It's a beach ball, and what, basically what I want is I want it as it reaches the apex. I want it to really kind of hover in the air and float a little bit. So we get a sense that this bowling ball is quite heavy and bounces a little bit, and the beach ball is very light and airy. So we'll have it float through the air at the apex on each of these. So that's why I've given myself a little bit more time. So now I'm going to just fill in these frames in between our key positions. So I'm going to go to frame, it's frame 9 right here. I'll click on, I'll turn on my um, onion skin. I'm going to go, oops, let's try that again. Go to frame 9, I'm going to increase my range to 13, and then we'll start on 8. So I'll click on frame 9 here, right click, go to insert keyframe, and I'm going to move this beach ball kind of in between these two drawings. I'm going to favor this side a little bit rather than that side, not right in the center, maybe find the center of the two and then go down a little bit. I'll go to frame 10, right click, insert keyframe. And I'll position this in between these two, favoring the bottom frame a little bit, not too much. Just a little bit closer. This center drawing is a little bit closer to this bottom drawing rather than the top drawing. Go to frame 11 here, insert a keyframe, move this up. And then I'll go to frame 12, right click, insert a keyframe, let's move this to here. All right, I'm going to go to frame 13, and I'll just move this drawing up a little bit. I'm going to use the arrows on the keyboard and nudge that up. All right, so now let's take a look at this. Okay. So far, so good. So let's start on frame 18. I'll turn on my onion skin and drag the range down to 13. So we'll go 19. The range of our onion skin is going to be 13 to 19. And I'm going to click on this frame right here. Right click, go to insert keyframe. And I'm going to, I'm not going to be right in the middle of these two drawings. I'm going to go a little bit closer to the bottom drawing. And then I'll go to frame 17. My range uh, will go forward one frame to 18, but the range on the other side here, I want it to change it so that so it's at 13. I'll click on this, right click, go to insert keyframe, and I'll just move this in between. Maybe go a little bit lower here. Go back to frame. 16. I'll change my range over here so it goes to 13. Right click, insert keyframe. Again, I'm a little bit 
closer to the lower drawing than the higher drawing. I'll go to frame 15, change my range here to 13, right click, insert keyframe, and then I'll go to frame 14, insert keyframe, change my range to 13, and just push this in between the two. All right, so let's hit return. There we go. So what we have is this ball really kind of floating at the apex. Okay. So let's go to frame 24. I'll go to, actually to frame 23 here. Turn on my onion skin. And I'll drag the range. Actually, we can start on frame 20 on this. We'll go from 19 to 24. I'll click on frame 20 and insert a keyframe and I'm going to move this up. And I'm going to stay a little bit closer to the bottom drawing. I go to frame 21, insert a keyframe. There we go. I go to frame 22, insert a keyframe. And then we'll go to frame 23, insert a keyframe, and bring that a little bit closer there. Change, change the range here. Let's take a look at this. Thirty-two to twenty-four. We've got a lot of space in here. So let's start, let's see, on thirty-one. And I'll change the range here. So let's insert our keyframe. And I'm not going to go in between the two drawings here. I'm going to go so that the uh, beach ball lines up with, so the t bottom of the beach ball right here lines up with the other frame, the other drawing right here. I'll go to frame 30. Change my range here to 24. Right click, insert keyframe. I'll bring this down. Once again, I'll have this drawing make contact with the other drawing here. Go to frame 29, change my range to 24. Insert my keyframe. I'll start to have these overlap a little bit here. So this drawing right here, the line right here is going to line up with the circle in the center there. I go to frame 28, right click, insert keyframe, change my range. Go to, let's see, frame 27, insert my keyframe. Change my range here. And then I'll go to frame 26, insert my keyframe. I'm going to turn off my onion skin and I'm going to take a look at the timing on this last bounce. Okay, so it looks pretty good. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to select from hit C26 here all the way to the end, and then I'm going to click and drag and move that stuff over, and then I'll take this last set of keyframes right here. So I'll just click and drag here, right click and go to remove frames. So I'll hit play here. Okay. All right. So now the last thing we need to do is we need to add a spin onto our beach ball. So let's start here on so on frame 7, everything's good. On frame 8, I'm going to start to spin the beach ball. So I'll go to my free transform here. I'm going to give it a backspin, so I'll rotate to the left here. 
I'm going to follow this orange tile right here. So on frame 7 it's up and then on frame 8 it's starting to move down. I'll go to frame 9 and then I'll select the beach ball and I'll rotate it down. So I'll check frame 8, go to frame 9. I went a little bit too far so I'm going to put the tile towards the bottom here. Let's go to frame 10. So I need to rotate this beach ball a little bit more on frame 10 here. So I want to make sure that, that that tile is not facing down, but rotated up a little bit more. So you can follow that rotation there. I will go to frame 11 and put the uh, rotate this so that the red tile is kind of to the side here. frame 12. Let's rotate it so the tile's almost pointing straight up here. And then on frame 13 we'll rotate it a little bit. 14. Where do we need to be at 14? 14. 14 we'll rotate it to the left a little bit. All right, we'll go to 15, continue to rotate, 16, seventeen. Eighteen. Get a little more rotation there. All right, let's go to nineteen. There's eighteen. Okay. So we need to rotate this a little bit up. Okay, let's check this. There we go. Okay, so then the rotation starting on frame 19. So I'm going to spin the other way now because beach ball, they can go any which way you never know what's going to happen so 19 we'll go to 20 here yeah so at 20 it's going to be almost on the the red tiles almost going to be towards the bottom there 21 i'm going to try and have less rotation happening on the second bounce. Just continuing to rotate this gradually around. You also want to check as you go. You don't want to lose track of the direction. Okay. All right. Last one. Okay, 
this one we need to rotate further down. Okay. Okay, so I'll press return here. There we go. Okay, so now that we have our rotation on the beach ball, I can turn off the visibility on the orange path and on the blue path. I'll play this one more time. And there we have it. All right, so if you have the bowling ball bouncing and rolling to a stop, you have the beach ball shooting up into the air and then falling off this little ledge here, then you are all done with this exercise.